says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, verse 1, by the mercies of God, that thou any of us come before God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So what we're going to read here about them not wanting to eat the king's food, that was them, by the grace of God, separating themselves out and not violating themselves, corrupting themselves with the king's food, which before it was eaten was always offered as a sacrifice under their gods. They were eating the part that remained. And Daniel understood that. And in no way would he identify with that pagan practice, just like our Lord would not in any way identify with the false practices of his day. You see him in the temple where they violated the temple and went in with a, a cord and chased out the money changers. That the zeal of the Lord's house had eaten him up. No way he would sit down at the pagan table of these false worshipers that here to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy. That's how we are. Christ has paid our debt. We're holy in him. And that word means sanctified unto God, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Why would we ever deviate, compromise? And therefore he says, be not conformed to this world. He's not just talking about the secular world there, but the religious world, all these false ways of worship. And I'll tell you, it's not easy to stand alone, to be isolated, to set apart. We see the way everybody else is going, and there's many that are taken up in that flood, but you don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's the Spirit of God that regenerates for us to know Christ. That's how we are brought know him and yet there's that constant work of the spirit renewing our mind instead of talking about this otherwise depraved mind that the same spirit of grace must take and fix on the Lord Jesus Christ and so here in verses 11 through 13 God tells Jeremiah to call Israel to return by mercy see this is the thing about the gospel it's for sinners there's no case too hard for God. So even though these are turning and going their own way, yet the Lord says here, verse 11, the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Judah had the example to learn, of Israel to learn from, and the advantage that Israel did not have. That's why it says that the backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than the treacherous Judah, that northern kingdom, who gave themselves to idols. So we can see here several reasons why Judah's sin was even worse. And so he says, Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel. They had already been taken in captivity, but here the call was if God so purposed, he could bring a remnant back out of those northern tribes. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. Why? For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. So this is the warning now to Judah that the Lord is able even to take the, the greatest reprobate and rebel and bring them back to himself should he so please. And yet Judah did not repent. Verse 13, only acknowledge thine iniquity. That thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. That's the beginning of the work of grace in the heart to acknowledge the sinfulness of your sin. And do you see yourself as that idolater? Now here's the Call with which we'll stop here in this reading. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I'm married unto you. Those that the Lord has indeed married unto himself by electing grace and Christ has redeemed and justified them, he must bring them. He'll not cast them off.